Okay. So fortunately, there is a almost a, a hack or modification to the Jacobi iteration and iterations like Jacobi iteration we can do to make it a good smoother. This is called under relaxation. So what does it do? So under relaxation is the following. So we have performed, remember we have said, okay, so u1, u of k is equal to, u of k plus 1 is equal to Jacobi, uh, which is minus d inverse l plus u times uh, So uh, d inverse, not this, this is the solution error. So minus d inverse times um, minus b plus l plus u times u of k. Right, so that's the uh, Jacobi iteration for, for a u equal to b. If we modify this iteration such that my uk plus 1 is not exactly equal to this, but it is equal to an average between what I would get in a Jacobi iteration and the previous iteration. So what I'm doing is I'm introducing a lambda here I call the relaxation factor. I would be a averaging using this relaxation factor 1 minus lambda times uk so that's the weight on the previous solution plus a lambda times what I would get if I'm applying um, the original Jacobi iteration times minus b plus l plus u times uk So what I have in the bracket is exactly what I would get if I apply the Jacobi iteration. But I'm weighting that by lambda, which if I use under relaxation, lambda would be less than 1. So lambda less than 1 under relaxation. There are other cases where you want lambda to be greater than 1. This is over relaxation. Uh, we are going to see later on applying over relaxation on Jacobi is a very bad idea. But applying over relaxation on some other methods like gauss seidel may be a good idea. Let's look at why that is the case. Okay, so first of all, we need to analyze in order for us to study the convergence, how fast does the on the relaxation or over relaxation converge for different frequency contents what should we do first how do we start analyzing convergence we need to derive a iteration for what quantity the error right we need to derive the error equation and what is the way to derive the error equation we subtract the iteration from a similar equation satisfied by the exact solution, right? In this case, we know that the original iteration is satisfied by the exact solution, and so is the original iteration multiplied by lambda. So lambda u would be also equal to lambda times minus d inverse minus b plus l plus u times u, right? just multiplying the same equation that is a split of this split of this is d uh, u plus l plus u times u is equal to b so if you move this to the right hand side and uh, uh, if you move this to the right hand side and uh, multiply both sides by d inverse you're going to get the the equation that is satisfied by u. So this is multiplying lambda on both sides and then 
split this into two terms u plus uh, let's see, u minus 1 minus lambda times u and then move this to the right hand side what we are going to get is u would be equal to 1 minus lambda times u plus lambda times the inverse minus b plus l plus u times u so the original uh, the exact solution u satisfies a very similar equation to the iteration except for replacing all the k and k plus ones by uh, the exact solution now subtract right so if we define e k to be u k minus u subtracting these equations would get me e k plus one is going to be equal to 1 minus lambda times e k plus lambda times the b term because they are the same in both is going to be cancelled out I'm only left with minus d inverse times l plus u times u uh, times sorry u, u is going to be replaced by e k let's combine these two terms I would get 1 minus lambda times identity minus lambda times d inverse l plus u times e k therefore the under relaxation or over relaxation the effect of the re relaxation to the error equation is to modifying this original iteration matrix by a constant multiplier lambda and then add that with a 1 minus lambda times I identity now think of what are these two things due to the eigenvalue of the matrix first of all what is a multiplication by lambda do well, what does a multiplication by lambda do to the eigenvalues of a matrix huh? multiplying by lambda right so a scaled version of the matrix has a scaled versions of the eigenvalues what is the effect of adding an identity to the eigenvalue of the matrix make it more SPD it's a constant shift to the eigenvalues right so so let me let me call this iteration matrix by uh, J right so let's call this J I'm going to define this J by the original iteration matrix which we know the eigenvalues they are uh, so the eigenvalues of J is cosine of uh, uh, J pi over n J goes from 1 to n minus 1 right okay now the eigenvalue of the j lambda I call it the Jacobi iteration with under or over relaxation is equal to 1 minus lambda i plus lambda times j right so we know we basically we have j multiplied by lambda and shifted by identity so if I have j times a eigenvector is equal to I use the lambda here so forgive me for using alpha as an eigenvalue if jv is equal to alpha v then j lambda times v would be equal to let's do the math 1 minus lambda times identity times v plus this lambda times j times v and uh, this because identity times v is just a v I get 1 minus lambda times v plus lambda times alpha times v so what I get is these are all constants I get 1 minus lambda plus alpha lambda v therefore v is still an eigenvector of the same uh, of j lambda the under relaxed iteration matrix and the eigenvalues 
Originally being alpha, they are modified by multiplying with multiplying with the under relaxation factor and adding by one minus lambda. So these are the alphas we get. That means the eigenvalues of j lambda is going to be one minus lambda plus lambda times cosine j pi over n right so think of what this lambda does to these eigenvalues first let's imagine uh, we have a previous eigenvalue that is very close to minus one that was our problem right that was our problem of why the Jacobi iteration is not suitable for multigrid. If this is very close to minus 1, and we apply a lambda that is close to 0.5, so let's imagine this is approximately minus 1, and this is approximately 0.5. What does this do? We have 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5, plus 0.5 times minus 1, we get what? Or we are averaging something that is close to 0 0.1 with something that is 1, right? So this is a weighted average. You think of 1 minus lambda times 1 plus lambda times the original eigenvalue. This is a weighted average between 1 and the original eigenvalues. What does it do to the negative eigenvalues? What does the lambda that is between 0 and 1 do to the eigenvalues? Yeah, it makes it, it pulls it towards 1, right? Let me, let me show the effect here. So lambda, let's, let's, make, let's make an n, n equal to uh, 16. Let's say we are going to see the same effect uh, pretty soon. So, so uh, Let's say the eigenvalues are a, they are cosine of uh, 1 to 15 times pi divided by n, right? So these are my a's. And my lambda, so let's say, is link space between 0 and 1. Actually, let's make it some over relaxation, 0 to 2. Let's make it 100. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a is going to show, I'm trying to plot lambda in the x-axis and uh, the relaxed eigenvalues on the y-axis. Let me see, a is this, lambda is this. So what I want to do is uh, uh, my a lambda is going to be 1 minus lambda plus lambda times a, which um, I want to make it a transpose. Uh, does this work? Lambda is going to be 1 by 100, so it's going to be this. A is going to be like that. No, this doesn't work. Uh, so okay, so, so I, I need to be lambda transpose times A. And uh, this will be transpose. So let's see if that works. Okay, so A lambda is 100 by 15, so let's plot uh, lambda A lambda. Uh, So let's grid it. So here's what we get. When lambda is equal to 1, when lambda is equal to 1, that is the exact original Jacobi iteration, right? Lambda is equal to 1, this term is 0, lambda is 1, so I get exactly the same Jacobi iteration. The eigenvalues goes from something very close to minus 1 to something very close to 1. This is responsible for the very slow convergence we observed. And this is responsible for very slow convergence of something that is difficult to observe generally, but like in multigrid, it's responsible for the slow convergence of multigrid. If we use a lambda that is greater than 1, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to the iteration? Uh, 